crime is a disease. Meet the cure. That cure being, of course, Lieutenant Cobretti, otherwise known as Cobra, played with delightful 80s cheese by Sylvester Stallone. A no-nonsense cop who doesn't play by the rules, who does whatever it takes to get the job done. Heck, he is so awesome, he even has awesome printed on his number plate. Now that's pretty awesome if I've ever seen it. However, a scary cult of crazed killing maniacs led by a deranged psycho called the Night Slasher is terrorizing the city. And after a supermodel called Ingrid, played by Bridget Nelson, witnesses one of their murders, the evil cult is now after her, to which it's up to Cobra to protect her, while taking down this evil group of violent misfits once and for all. Cobra is to Stallone what Commando is to Schwarzenegger, in that it's not his best efforts, it's cheesy as hell, but damn if there isn't something really enjoyable about it. So buckle up and get ready for a testosterone thrill ride as we look into 10 things that you didn't know about Cobra. Hmm. Number 10, Cobra is the Stallone version of Beverly Hills Cop. The genesis of Cobra started when Stallone signed on to play the lead character Axel Foley in Paramount Pictures' Beverly Hills Cop. However, Stallone had some issues with the script. He wanted to make some rewrites to make the movie more to his style by making the script less comical, making the main hero more of an action tough guy, along with making the main female lead the love interest with bigger action sequences. Paramount Pictures rejected Stallone's take on Beverly Hills Cop, feeling that the action set pieces would have gone beyond the movie's budget. That and it just strayed too far from the original script. So Stallone left the project and Eddie Murphy was subsequently cast as Foley. And Stallone took his ideas that he had created for his version of Beverly Hills Cop and reworked them into his own film, of which would eventually become Cobra. In fact, the fact that Cobra is Stallone's version of Beverly Hills Cop was even referenced or made fun of in Beverly Hills Cop 2, where we see a Cobra poster in the background of that movie. Number 9, Cobra is based off a book too. Not only is Cobra the workings of an alternative Beverly Hills Cop script, but Stallone actually took inspiration from a novel called Fair Game by Paula Gosling, which is a survival story where a young woman called Claire Randall accidentally observes a hitman killing his target, where the hitman is now trying to hunt her down, where she gets help from a detective called Mike Malchek. And the story is basically the two on the run trying to survive while being hunted. So when Stallone was turning his version of Beverly Hills Cop into a movie, aka Cobra, he used fair game as a basis for the story, which is where the subplot of a young woman being hunted while having a local law enforcement agent trying to help her comes from. What's interesting about the fair game novel is when it was originally published in the 70s, it went by the title A Running Duck until 1978 when the book was reprinted as Fair Game. Wow, just imagine if the movie Cobra was called A Running Duck. Yeah, suddenly it doesn't sound as badass. Number eight, original script ideas that were rejected from the film. In the original script for Cobra, there was going to be a subplot where we learn that Cobra is more scarred and damaged, where he once had a girlfriend who was killed by a quote, psychopath that he was trying to catch, end quote. Which I guess would have demonstrated why Cobra is the way he is. There was also going to be a huge action sequence on a boat, and a subplot that would have revealed Detective Monty to be the real cult leader of the violent gang after all. Where Cobra kills the dirty cop when he was trying to kill Ingrid. And even more disturbing due to modern real life events, the shootout at the start of the movie wasn't going to take place in a grocery store, but instead a movie theater. Uh, yeah, moving on. Number seven, talent behind the scenes. Cobra was directed by George P. Cosmatis, who Stallone had just previously worked with one year earlier, when the director also directed Rambo First Blood Part Two. 
Cosmatis would go on to direct the underwater horror movie Leviathan and Tombstone. Although Cobra was distributed by Warner Brothers, the production company behind Cobra was in fact everyone's favourite 1980s train wreck movie company, Canon Films. And Cobra wouldn't be Stallone's only brush with Canon Films, as the next year he starred in Over the Top, which was directed by Canon co-founder Menachman Golem, who Stallone apparently didn't enjoy working with. Cobra was scored by Serbian-born composer Sylvester Live, who also scored Navy Seals and Hot Shots, as well as helping on the scores of Flashdance and Scarface. As mentioned, Ingrid, the female protagonist and love interest, was played by Bridget Nielsen, who also starred with Sylvester Stallone in Rocky IV just one year earlier. In fact, that very year, her and Stallone even got married, so thus they would have been married while making Cobra. No, oh, that actually sounds really sweet. <laughs> they got divorced the following year. Number 6. Casting the Villain Cobra's main villain, the Night Slasher, was played by actor Brian Thompson, who to me growing up, I'll always remember from The X-Files. At the time of Cobra's casting, Thompson hadn't starred in any big role in any movie yet, with his previous role being that of one of the punks in The Terminator, the one that gets royally messed up by Arnie. When it came to casting the Night Slasher, despite auditioning for the role seven times, Stallone just didn't think Thompson had the right acting chops for the part, believing Thompson to be too much of a nice guy for the role. However, Stallone changed his mind when he saw one of Thompson's auditions, where he saw for himself that Thompson had quite the scary side about him. Interestingly, in the scene where the Night Slasher exchanges dialogue with Cobra, Thompson performed his lines not to Stallone, but rather the script girl, as supposedly when it came time to filming that scene, Stallone was too busy watching a basketball game. Number 5. Many Deleted Scenes Is it just me, or at times does Cobra feel like a horror movie? After all, it's about a helpless victim getting preyed upon by terrifying masked killers. I mean, just look at the trailer and its quick static cuts. Something that makes it look more like a horror movie. Heck, the main villain is even called the Night Slasher, a name that wouldn't seem out of place in a slasher movie. I mean, it even has the word slasher in the name. I guess you could say that Cobra is what you'd get if you mix Halloween with a Stallone action movie. In fact, Cobra was so brutally violent and gory that it was originally hit with an X rating. Warner Brothers were not happy with the movie's added doses of carnage, so the original cut of the movie, which stood at two and a half hours of running time, had to get 30 to 40 minutes removed, so Cobra could receive an R rating instead of an X. However, more cuts had to be made. As a month before Cobra's release, Top Gun came out and was a massive success. So in order to get more screenings, even more cuts were being made to the movie's running time, to which it got trimmed down to a mere 84 minutes. If you've ever wondered why Cobra is such a short film, well now you know why. It's because of Top Gun. Number four, Cobra got a remake, sort of. Remember how I said Cobra is based on the action novel Fair Game by Paula Gosling? Well, when Cobra was released to tie in with the movie's release, Stallone wanted to publish a re-release of the novel. I guess you could say as merchandise for the film. Only, he had a really bizarre request of crediting himself as co-author of the book, despite the fact that he had nothing to do with the book's writing. So, naturally, Paula Gosling said no. However, another film version of Fair Game was released in 1995, starring William Baldwin and everyone's favourite 90s crush, Cindy Crawford, as the two main leads. So yeah, because Cobra and the 1995 Fair Game are based on the same novel, I guess you could say that the 1995 Fair Game is a remake, or be that a reboot. Fair Game didn't do too well when it came out, and was criticised mainly for Crawford's acting. And, well, it pretty much became a forgotten movie from there. Number 3. Mosquitoes Got In The Way Of Filming Cobra was originally going to be filmed around Seattle. However, it was decided to film the movie in California instead, specifically around LA and Venice Beach, giving the movie a warmer, more tropical feel. 
The movie's climax was being filmed at an abandoned bottle plant in Santa Clarita, and the scene was originally going to be filmed at night. However, at night the location was swamped with mosquitoes, so Stallone suggested that the filming should be done during the day. That way, none of the cast and crew had to endure those pesky, blood-sucking mosquitoes. Yeah, I would have opted to do the same thing as mosquitoes suck. See that? See what I did there? Number two, video game. Yeah, believe it or not, but Cobra actually had a video game tie-in. Something I didn't even know about till doing this episode. I don't know why I feel so surprised, but I actually really am. The game was released by Ocean and could be played on systems such as the Commodore 64. Just like the movie, the action starts off at a grocery store where, unlike the movie, you're fighting Arnold Schwarzenegger from Commando and, um, Inspector Gadget? And as the game goes on, you get more scenes that resemble scenes from the actual movie, where you have to kill the bad guys and save Ingrid. The graphics look decent enough for its time, and its gameplay seems to be just fine. Cobra doesn't exactly seem like a standout game, but I definitely would play it if I was given the chance. Number one, biggest opening for its time. Despite the fact that Cobra got torn apart by critics, it was actually a huge financial success, bringing in $160 million at the box office on a $25 million budget. In fact, on its opening weekend, Cobra made $12 million, which was the highest opening for a Warner Brothers movie at that time. Not bad for a movie that would go on to be nominated for six Razzies. So what was everyone's problem with it? Well, the usual whining and moaning about it being too violent and too much like a generic action movie with a generic action movie tough guy. And I admit there is problems with the movie's editing, acting, and even some creative choices, but it is basically just meant to be a comic book style thrill ride action movie. Something to get a quick bit of excitement from, which it actually does deliver on cue. After all, not everyone hates Cobra. Ryan Gosling seems to like it. And for the movie Drive, his character's gimmick of having a matchstick in his mouth was paying homage to Cobra, who does the same thing. Oh well, say what you want to say about Sylvester Stallone, especially at this time of his career, what with his sometimes bizarre creative choices and possible ego. One thing is for sure, he knew how to get bums on cinema seats. Well, that was my look into Cobra, and if it's deep, thought-provoking drama, or Shakespeare that you seek, then this is not the movie for you. However, if you love those 80s action movies like Lethal Weapon and Commando, then you'll get enjoyment out of Cobra. It's not as good as, say, Die Hard or Lethal Weapon, but it's still a worthy entry in the genre. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I'm going to prove how badass and dangerous I am by randomly holding up two axes and banging them together. Um, see ya!